Hi. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that I thoroughly enjoy their content on different subjects. One of my favorites are um, the videos about dolls. There's many YouTubers out there that I just thoroughly enjoy their content. Well, there's a couple, Tammy Powley and uh, Marna at Dolls Rescue, that also have the little challenges that people can um, get in on. And I thoroughly enjoy watching those too. And this time I decided I'm going to try and jump in on that just for the fun. So um, the one that I'm doing is the 22 Doll Dreams Challenge. I hope I said that right. Um, basically, something to do with dreams. And mine is the quest for my dream doll. I watch different YouTubers and they have all these wonderful doll collections and the dolly dopamine just starts running through your veins just watching um, what they do. And I feel bad personally because as soon as I see a doll, I just want to rip it open and rip it apart and put it together and just do horrible things to them. And so, you know, I have my Frankenstein, Frankenstein dolls. And um, when she had this challenge on, you know, what would be your dream doll? Or I just decided to think like, why do I feel the need to change these dolls? And it's because I'm on my quest for the perfect doll. Um, growing up, my mom indulged my every whim. I mean, like she indulged. Um, whatever I want wanted, she got it. I was an artsy kid, so I wanted paint and pencils and crayons and pastels, and I would um make dolls, but I really wasn't into fashion dolls. I, so I had all these little baby dolls that I just loved and I would make dolls and again whatever I wanted she got it so um growing up I didn't really have any fashion dolls and I really wasn't interested in them it wasn't that I um didn't get them just you know I, I just really wasn't interested in them and then um my first like Barbie type doll that I can think of that I just really wanted was the totally hair Barbie. And I was like 13 years old. I got it. Um, my aunt got it for me, uh, when I turned 13 and then I thought I was too old for dolls. I grew them and gave them away. All my dolls gave them away. Kind of regret. I don't regret it because they went to people who, um, were much younger than me and they thoroughly enjoyed you know, the dolls. And that's what I was all about. Like, who else is going to enjoy this doll? So, um, another thing that when I was younger that I just thoroughly enjoyed playing with, um, were action figures. Like my cousin, we would just spend hours and hours playing with the little He-Mans and the G.I. Joes and, Ninja Turtles, and he just had every single action figure you can think of because that was his thing. And so I would come up there and we would have so much fun playing with the action figures. And action figures are made for action. They can bend every single way you want them to. They can do any type of pose. They can do all sorts of things. So on my quest for or just thinking about my quest for what is my perfect doll basically it's an aesthetically pleasing beautiful doll that moves like an action figure that's why i tear up my dolls to make them into giant action figures most action figures are very small they are you know one sixth one twelfth one eighth one tenth sizes which are fine but i like big dolls. I like one third size dolls, one fourth size dolls. Barbies are fine. I like big dolls. When I was growing up, I had big dolls and just feeding that nostalgia, you know, I had a doll that you hold her hand and she walked. 
I didn't like her head on that dial. And I had another dial that was a little bit smaller. And she had this, you know, gorgeous hair and stuff. And you sat her in the little chair. I remember popping the heads off of my dials and switching them around because I wanted one to blink and be tall and I wanted the other one to be short and cute and do her hair. And You know, um, there was another dial that I had that had a whole set. She had all the accessories and everything. I put it together and one of my friends came by and they had no dolls. No dolls. And she just loved my doll. And so, you know, before she left, I told my mom, okay, I'm giving this doll away to, my, you know, my friend. And she has to have all the accessories and stuff. And now thinking about back, I hope my mom didn't get offended because she, you know, paid her hard-earned money for me to have this doll. I remember exactly how much it cost and everything and with all the accessories and stuff. But... Again, my mom was a very giving person and, you know, it rubbed off on me. So I was a very giving person. I'm not really attached to um, things like that much, especially I had so many dolls. I had so many dolls that I figured that one doll, you know, that my friend was going to give her so much more love because it was her one doll and I had like, you know, 50 dolls, you know. I've got plenty of dolls. I'm not hurting for a doll. So, um, yeah, I just hope she really, you know, didn't feel bad because I gave it away. It wasn't that I didn't enjoy it or anything. It's just that, you know, her goodness of heart and, you know, how given she was, it just kind of rubbed off on me. It's the same way. Anyways, going back to um, Perfect Doll, I enjoy creating stuff. So, on my quest to create the perfect doll, I am destroying a bunch of other dolls. That's kind of a reason why I won't personally get a customized doll, like a full doll or a BJD doll, because I have the tendency to take stuff apart and make it into something else. That's where I get my little adrenaline rush from, you know, making something different. And again, on that quest to marry the aesthetics of a doll with the uh, posability of an action figure. So I do have a little um, collection of dolls and my me and my son, we have action figures too because... We, okay, so my son and I, we had like this conversation. I'm like, oh, can I call you the dolls or action figures? Or, you know, what should I address them? And he's like, I don't care. They're doll action figures. I'm like, yes, doll action figures. <laughs> so that's what we do. We create doll action figures. Here's a little collection of uh, some of our favorites and constantly working on something. But let's see. So. Here's my top. This is my dream doll right here. Um, she's still in the process of being created, but she is so far has all the aesthetics and um, attributes that I would love to have in my perfect doll. But here's my Amaya Rain doll. I fell in love with her because she had... um. A wonderful like shape. I, I like the um the little rainbow high dolls, but the scale I don't I mean I like big dolls. And when they made one into a big doll, I just kind of went gaga. So and she's articulate, you know, her hands move, her you don't get this line, you don't get the light right now. Ah, don't fall yet. Don't fall. I'll probably cut this part out, but back to you. This is my Amaya Rain. She is fun to play with. She's a very big doll. Her, you know, she has lots of articulation. She doesn't have perfect articulation, though. She's 
can only reach so far. I love her body shape. I love, I love the exaggerated proportions. I love that in dolls. I don't necessarily, I don't want them to be realistic. I want them to be, you know, kind of that cartoonish anime, you know, um, I, I love the artistic style in dolls. It's for me. I don't want mine to look like humans. I want them to look like something you drew. So <laughs> that's kind of the uh, aesthetic that I go for. Um, this is my um, mechanical ball joint dowel that I got off of Amazon. She's from the Canon. Uh, so I think they're called you canon. And I think she's a one third size doll. Of course, modified her, gave them some different hands so that they can move. I like her aesthetics. She's a beautiful doll. She is very limited in her movements though. She's got a lot of points of articulation, but the way they move I wasn't quite satisfied because, of course, I grew up playing with action figures. So I want all my dolls to move like action figures, you know, and I want them to have a certain aesthetic. I love this doll, too. She's very, very, um, I don't know. She looks more realistic as far as I'm concerned, which I like those aesthetics. I, I like the way she looks. She's a beautiful doll. Um, I wish that her um, articulation was a little better. This is my uh, Maddie Hatter Ever After High doll. She's just like the Monster High dolls. She is very, very, very articulate. She has all the points of articulation that I'm looking for. Her arms, you know, go up and down. They rotate. Her hands rotate. You can pull her arms off uh, up here and here if you want to dress her in, you know, different clothing. The, um, the only thing is she doesn't have a joint here, but she has the really high he I love high heel shoes. Growing up, I wore high heel shoes. I don't wear them anymore because I want to walk, but she has the high heel feet that I love and she's double jointed everywhere. You know, she has the articulation of an action figure and the size of her. She is a one third or one fourth. She's a one fourth uh, scale doll. She's got those exaggerated portions, so she's not exactly, you know, like a one fourth human, but she has exaggerated proportions, very aesthetically pleasing for a doll, as far as I'm concerned. And she moves like an action figure. I love it. Now, she is the perfect doll. I love her face. I love Maddie Hatter. I love Alice in Wonderland. But it's like, can we make that even better? Yes. I've been watching everybody collecting their Blythe dolls. Oh my goodness. I love Blythe dolls. Now, what's wrong with a Blythe doll? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with a Blythe doll. But... The perfect Blythe doll for me has to be a big doll. Has to have articulation like a like an action figure. I want her to be able to like do stuff. And she can. I got this is a custom made faceplate. So I started off with an um a Blythe-like doll that I got off of Amazon. I'm like, okay, there's a million of these. Nobody's feelings are going to get hurt, hopefully, if I destroy that doll, which I did. I pulled it apart. I'm like, okay, I'm not ruining someone's beautiful creation. But I really wanted a custom Blythe doll. Like, I love the... When I look at people's um, 
blithed out, you know, collections and stuff. I'm like, oh, those are so beautiful, but I would hate to tear one up. I would just, you know, feel so bad. And I want a big doll. I want a big doll. So I used one of these bodies with all the articulation I could find. Hands are Sybarite dolls. I found a, um, a set of those on eBay, I believe. So that I wasn't tearing up a doll with beautiful hands. It was some hands that were unwanted. I like to take stuff that is, you know, pre-loved. Spares. Extras. Use those to create my, um, my dream doll. And this is a faceplate. I bought a faceplate set that someone created off of Macari. They make, you know, they do different um, faceplates. So I felt that I wasn't destroying anything. If anything, I was making something, creating something better. So that was my aim with this. I made a wig for her. Again, just using, you know, spare pieces. This doll is literally made of a bunch of spare pieces. And she is almost perfect. I had some different eyelashes on her. Um, I've been making her uh, eye chips. And I really enjoy making the eye chips. So, basically, you know, I might buy a few pairs. But I'm thoroughly enjoying the process of making them myself. You know, things that I want to make or create or craft, I do usually do that myself. And then things I'd rather buy or I just really want to enjoy someone else's, you know, creativity, I will go buy that. But I, again, try not to, I try not to buy anything that someone, you know, poured their, their, um, creativity into and then turn around and tear it up. So this is, this was a faceplate only. It was just the front and the back. I put it on the, um, donor Blythe-like doll that I bought off of Amazon. This I got off of eBay. I get the used dolls off of eBay that are not in collector condition. You know, they're missing this or missing that or whatever. So I don't feel bad about pulling those apart, you know, and they came from the store. Um, Again, this is one of the other ones that I kind of worked with a long time ago. My son, uh, my son has adopted her now. She is no longer a doll. She is now an action figure and she is on a basketball team. So I dare not change her. She's missing her eyelashes and her original hair. And she is in very much love condition, which is fine because dolls are therapy. They are meant to make you happy. This, she is a kind of a collection. I don't think I ever want to do anything to her. This is one of my first like Barbies that I just kind of fell in love with her aesthetics. This is a Mycene Barbie, which they don't make anymore because I think they had issues with brats. So yeah, hard to find. I had one that I customized and then I felt bad because I tore the doll up. So then I went and bought another one. And this one, I am not touching her. I'm not rebodying her yet yet um one of my other favorites this is an action figure she's a little storm she's very small look at her articulation though she's got some moves there but she's not double jointed or anything but i just love her but she's so tiny i just i can't with the tiny dolls are too tiny for me especially now barely I can't really work with tiny stuff anymore like I used to I need it to be big so I can hold it properly if I craft for it I don't have the dexterity anymore to work on such small items and such such small things but she's one of my favorites too but again she's got she's I love her aesthetic she looks like a doll but she has the moves of an action figure. And that's basically what I've been, you know, looking after to make something that moves like an action figure. He is in much love condition. This is one of my son's action figures on our pretend basketball team. So is he. 
he is in very love condition. I got him like that. And I said, oh, we can change it. We can fix the hands and do all this stuff. And my son's like, no, <laughs> leave him just like that. So my son is happy with him. And then we made this little outfit for him. Yeah, we have fun. We use our little creativity. And so, you know, we could, I don't know, we can make stuff that looks very realistic or we can have fun and, you know, make it the way we want to. But this, this doll action figure is not cheap by any means. Like, I think I paid close to $50 just for the head, which I guess in ball, you know, in ball joint doll world, that's nothing. But for little action figures... That's really nothing either, but if you want, you know, a full doll and everything with all the clothing and shoes and everything, and it's already put together, it's going to cost quite a bit, a few hundreds of dollars. This is for my, this was for my little son, which he's way younger than the, um, the recommended age for these toys hence why they're missing pieces sometimes it's 15 and older he won't be 15 for a few ooh, a lot of years actually so but i love the posability of action figures but again it's one six size i want a big dial that can move like an action figure and that has the gorgeous face of a Blythe doll. So hence why I have my doll. Her name is Tori. She is always a work in progress. The reason why her name is Tori is because she's named after Victor Frankenstein. Because I'm constantly Frankensteining all of my dolls and to create something that... Um, I guess bring back those attributes that I loved in toys, you know, from when I was a kid, the nostalgia of having a toy figure that could move in any way you want it to, but looked very, um, aesthetically pleasing. So that's that. One more thing that I had thoroughly enjoyed when I was a child was playing with clay that was one of my favorite favorite um pastimes actually again I was a very creative child my mom you know was a very creative person as well and she gave me whatever I wanted so when I got older you know I wanted to make a doll face and my aesthetics I'm not really that good at it and, um, I don't know, when I create doll faces, they're more caricature than doll. So, and of course I was, you know, practicing, but I will show you, I will eventually finish this doll or whatever. And I probably will put her on one of these 17 inch bodies because this is the perfect body. It's kind of like, you know, making a BJD, but without making a BJD. And again, she's very, she's a caricature. She wasn't meant to be perfect or anything, but to, you know, have personality. So I'll show it. She has personality. This is the doll face that I made. And she reminds me of, it's not, it's, it's made out of clay. It's made out of like um, the clay that you put in the oven. I once upon a time made a really beautiful like baby face, but I used the wrong kind of um, base in the middle, but that was so much fun. And I'm used to making bigger dolls. Again, I didn't really like make, I didn't play with, um, with fashion dolls. I played with like baby dolls. So my first um, doll that I made was like a baby doll and she turned out beautiful. She was pretty big or whatever but I wanted to make something that kind of looked like a 
fashion doll. I actually have another doll, but I think my daughter has it that I made the head. And she was a she was like a small fashion doll too, but the scale, I don't really care for the scale. I like the bigger dolls. She reminds me of Lady Elaine Fairchild. I'm not sure why, but Lady Elaine Fairchild probably wasn't the nicest of the characters on Mr. Rogers, but to me, she was the most, um, she created the most impression for me. So when I started making this, I was like, oh, she looks like Lady Elaine Fairchild. So to me anyway, she has lots of personality. I'm going to repaint it and, you know, redo it and actually finish this doll one day. Not sure what I'm going to do with the eyes, though, because those are just like little sequins. And again, I was doing this just to make something because this is therapy. Playing with dolls is therapy. Keeps you, I won't say sane, but it keeps you functional. <laughs> If you're having any, like, emotional issues or health issues or mental issues or life issues or any and all of the above, dolls will, you know, keep you functioning. That's what I love about them. You can take them wherever you want. They help you get through some stuff. But these all bring back nostalgic feelings from things that my mom used to do when I was a child. Again, some of the things I did to my toys when I was a child. I hope my mom was not offended by me, you know, popping heads off of dolls. And just, I think she knew how creative I was. And so, mom. I hope she had no hard feelings. <laughs> hope there was no hard feelings there. Yeah. But one day I'm going to finish this. And so far, this is my dream doll right here. Thanks for watching. Toodles.